Welcome, kindly cat people. My name is Jackson Galaxy, or as I'm better known, Cat Mythbuster. Mythbuster. That's right, folks. I've been spending over 30 years debunking some of the most widely held beliefs about cats. Why? I don't know. Sometimes superstition, sometimes just super stupid. But there are <laughs> But I am here to actually find grains of truth that actually might be part of the cat zeitgeist. Anyway, today we will start with some that might just surprise you, but that's why I'm here, Jackson Galaxy. Cat Mythbusters! Anyway, let's start with number one. Cats and dogs do not get along. Hmm, is that a myth or is it the truth? Well, join me over here at the Mythbusting Super Portal. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. The Cat Mythbuster Lab. Let's start with the thesis of the argument, which is that cats and dogs are naturally born enemies. That's right. Okay, so I went through exhaustive scientific research over the eras, and I conclude that the problem is TV. Cartoons, to be exact. Yeah, I think that we have learned about the animosity by watching, you know, cigar-chomping bulldogs and cats who disappear, you know, into thin air. Anyway, whatever it is, I find it very funny, but very wrong. And I really hate the fact that this is what happened, because why is it that we don't think that cats and dogs can get along? Different species, cats and dogs. You're welcome. I think that we fall into an unfortunate place where we see cats as basically failed dogs. Cats are not dogs. They are cats. And as such, we just have to speak to that motivation. The first component is introducing cats and dogs in the right way. If we speak to those motivations, if we divide them, if we make positive associations, then yes, most cats, most dogs can get along. And uh, to that, I would point you to this video right over my head in which I absolutely talk about how to introduce cats and dogs. If that is done well, and if we do things like don't make the mistake of putting dog resources like dog toys, dog food, etc., in a place where the cat can go up to it and the dog can get mad or the other way around, you see where I'm getting. If you use common sense, then we can dispel all of the history built into cartoons with the reality. Now, am I saying that all cats and all dogs can get along? Of course, my friends, I am not that silly. I am the cat myth buster and not just a, an ordinary Joe on the street. But cats and cats cannot get along. Cats and kids cannot get along. Cats and hedgehogs cannot get along. That is just the nature of the game. When we talk about what? You know I always say it individuals. This is all about the individual, not about all cats and all dogs. And when we bear this entire picture in mind, my friends, we can say that cats and dogs naturally being enemies is a myth that is busted. 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 Yeah. Ah, moving on. So our second myth today is that cats can and should drink milk. So, in terms of cats drinking milk, uh, cats plus milk equals good. We gotta understand why is it that we think that cats, uh, this is a cat, uh, you know, like that, okay. Cats like to drink, um, mm, Milk, that's a, that's a bottle of milk. Cats, milk, everybody, and that includes you folks, get weaned by the milk of our own species. So that means that humans consume human milk and cats consume cat milk from their moms. Now by the time that kitten is, oh, let's even say 10 weeks old, they are not any longer drinking the milk from mom. They are then on hard food and no longer uh, need milk because they are what, folks? Weaned. 
The word weaned means that they no longer rely on nutrition from their mother. So once they are weaned, then we say, okay, well, they don't need milk anymore. But there is another aspect here. The aspect that we speak of, well, it's a cow. Uh, yeah, it's a cow. <clears throat> Boy. Okay, there, hmm. Okay, well, anyway, the problem is the milk that the cat would be drinking is cow milk, not cat milk. So if you forget the fact that number one, they are weaned, number two, cat is not a calf. Cat, not cow. What is my conclusion to this? First of all, cow milk should not be consumed by any adult, let alone a cat adult. But the other thing that we need to think about here is what happens if you are consuming something that you are not meant to consume? Well, if your cat has drunk enough milk or you've been dumb enough to offer them ice cream or sour cream or anything like that, you have probably dealt with the results, which are explosive, stinky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, explosive and stinky and just all around disgusting and that's because cats' tummies are meant to eat something very, very particular once they've been weaned. And what is that, folks? Meat. Not milk, but they're obligate carnivores. If you feed them anything from sour cream to the taco that you put the sour cream on top of, the same sort of explosive stinkiness and even beyond. Uh -huh. They're all foreign to a cat's evolutionary biology. Physiology? Yes, physiology. Hydration, you say. Doesn't a cat need to drink something to stay hydrated? Yes, silly people, of course they do. Uh, to that end, weaned water. Cats should be drinking water. And with water, where do they get it from? Really, you wanna offer it up in all kinds of ways. First of all, uh, a fountain. A fountain would be a great place and having them all over the place. Actually, I know where you can get those too. Where was it? I know I saw fountains somewhere. Huh. Anyway, I'll think about it later. And uh, besides them, you can just go for the normal water dish, but then there's another interesting fact. If cats are eating meat and nothing else, that's where they get their hydration from. So whether it's wet food or raw food, uh, you can get the not only nutrition, but over 70% of their natural hydration through their food. Don't forget, folks, cats are desert animals. They don't need to drink anything. Well, not much of it, in about 30% of their diet. Anyway, I, I digress, and I'm not sounding as scientific as I'd like. But regardless, the most important thing here, and that is not uh, exactly my artwork, but science and evolution, we can only come to one conclusion, and that is that cats are not meant to drink milk. That is not any kind of milk, goat milk or, or, or cow milk. Cats plus milk equals good. Myth busted. 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 And now a bonus myth. Yes, it's about this very channel, the Jackson Galaxy channel. And the question is, what percentage of people who watch these videos, including you, my good friend, are actually subscribed to the channel? The choices are, one, 20% of you are subscribed. Number two, 40%. And number three, 80%. What is your guess? Well, the answer is 40%. Only 40% of you are subscribed to the channel. Now that's funny considering that we do make a lot of myth-busting and enlightening uh, videos about cats. So what's the answer? Yes, folks, subscribe. Subscribe, and also it would be great if you were to give maybe a thumbs up and leave a comment because that is what makes this channel tick. Now, this next myth is why they call me the myth buster, 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 because it is something that is so widely held. I don't know, I bet you you don't even know it. That's why I'm here. And this next one is all about, where, where the hell is my pen, people? That cats purr when they're happy. So, cat, that's this guy here, plus purr equals happy. Here's the thing, yes, cats absolutely purr when they're happy, so we can check that off. 
Does that mean that the myth can't be busted? We wouldn't be talking about it if it wasn't. But there is more to it, my fine friends, because otherwise we'd just be full of, you know, misinformation or myth information, as the case may be. So anyway, why else would a cat purr? Well, the interesting one here is cats will purr when they are mortally wounded or in pain. Um, oh, no, yeah, anyway, there. Why is that? Nope, folks, I don't even know what that means. Uh, cats will actually purr when they're mortally wounded or in some kind of pain, like giving birth. And why is that? Well, that's because the purr vibrates at between 25 and 140 hertz. And that is important because that range, it has been postulated, helps to actually facilitate the knitting of bones and the healing of muscle and tissue and ligament. Because don't forget, folks, cats are both prey and predator. As successful as they are as hunters and how all of their uh, muscles and whiskers and senses are pointed towards that, it's also the opposite to help them survive in times of injury like this. So yes, the purr is their friend in those times as well. And the third thing we have to remember is that is when cats are fearful. And it almost a sense of mortification, not their mortality, but oh, I'm going uh, to have a heart attack because I'm afraid. I mean, it's funny when you think about it, like you'll take your cat to the vet and suddenly they're like, oh, your cat loves me because he's purring. <laughs> Silly. Anyway, that is when they're scared. Yike, says the cat. Then they will purr as a self-soother. A self-soother in that the purring itself actually releases endorphins. And when endorphins are released, they will get calm. So it's the opposite of this first one, but it plays into it. So I am unhappy and scared. I'm going to make myself happy by self-soothing. See, it's almost like a circle here. And there you have it, folks. Between the happiness check mortally wounded or in pain, check, or scared, check. There are a number of reasons cats will purr. And what does that mean, everybody? Can't hear you. Myth busted. <laughs> Let's move on to our next myth. And that myth is, well, or is it a myth? I gotta have a little bit of suspense here. Cats can see in total darkness. I get that one, really, because you know how when we look at a cat in total darkness, you can see the glow of their eyes, and maybe that leads us to think they can, you know, see in total darkness, or is it something else? Let's go back to the lab, and we will figure this all out, because that's what we do here on Cat Myth Busters, 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 Busters. So, cats in total darkness, plus darkness equals yes. Okay, and, or no. So. The first thing we have to remember is this. Let's just start collecting some facts here, because we're all about the facts. Cats are crepuscular. So what does crepuscular? I know. Crepuscular means that cats are neither diurnal, meaning that they operate all day long, or nocturnal, being night animals. They are most effective uh, in terms of their senses when their natural prey is out, which is when dusk and dawn when we have low light and not necessarily no light. So that's one thing, and maybe we've exaggerated over time and said they can see in pitch darkness. Now, the next thing we think about is because of this, because of when their prey is out, we think, well, how have their senses adapted over time? Well, now we talk about the construction of a cat's eye. Yeah, so. Okay, a cat's eye is first of all equipped with additional uh, photoreceptor rods. That's right, they are more sensitive to light than we are. Their pupils dilate much more than ours. If you think about saucer eyed or bowling ball eyes, what they're doing right then is allowing more light in. Now, cats actually sacrifice more color, so they don't see things in terms of th that kind of detail, but that means that they can see, is there something lurking over there 100 yards away in low light? Yeah, I see it. It's kind of like that movie Predator, 
but they're a lot nicer than that thing. Anyway, so that means that more light is coming in. This is a light bulb. So that more light is coming in to those pupils. Now we have the tapetum lucidum, which is a layer of tissue in the back of a cat's eye. So once all that light gets drawn in, the tapetum lucidum here in the back here gathers that light and actually reflects it back out. So when we were talking before about a cat's eyes glowing in the dark, thanks to the tapetum lucidum. And that means that that light gets amplified and again, a lot allows your cat to see in near total darkness. Now we have talked about dusk and dawn and low light, but what about no light whatsoever? No folks, there has to be just even the slightest bit of light in order for it to work. Otherwise total darkness? Nope folks, the answer is no. Myth busted. Bust. 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 Well, that's it for today, folks. I am so glad that uh, you let me come into your homes and talk about your cats and, you know, bust some myths along the way. Now, if you've got a myth you'd like me to bust, then I'm telling you pretty please, put that in the comments below and just say, myth, question mark, and let me know, because I will be back very soon with another episode of Cat Myth Buster. <laughs> Light, love, and mojo to you, folks. <laughs>